McFarland. KT, good to see you. Um, listen, so every situation, it doesn't stay, uh, doesn't stay uh, stagnant. So what Iran was when Donald Trump left, left office is very different than what Iran is today. They've got the $6 billion uh, from the Biden administration. They've made billions of dollars on, on oil and gas sales. And so how challenging is it going to be to get Iran back under control when they've kind of grown so much over the last three years under this administration and have so much more money? Well, some estimates, you're really right to talk about the money. Some estimates are that they're probably $100 billion richer um, under Biden than they would have been under Trump because of the sanctions, because of the direct payments, because of the hostage ransom, but particularly because of high oil prices. The problem now is that President Biden has made so many threats and he hasn't carried anything out. And so the Iranians and their proxies they're every single time, they're going to do a little more, a little more, a little more. And at some point, they're going to sink an American ship. Americans are going to die, and then we're going to be sucked into a war that we don't want, we're not prepared to fight, and could have been prevented. Mark Dubowitz, KT, the CEO of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, wrote a letter to the Wall Street mm -hmm. Journal, and it was uh, published today, and it essentially says, weakness from Biden in Washington emboldens Tehran, and he mentions the Iran supreme leader, and that he's escalated uh, all these uh, proxy wars against U.S. assets because Biden hasn't gone after Iran. And he said the U.S. is right. being pulled into a deeper Middle Eastern quagmire on the supreme leader's terms. Only direct strikes against the military assets of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards will persuade him that he will pay a severe price for his aggression. Yeah, and, and the point of all of this is that Iran is now calling, the, bad pun, but Iran is calling all the shots. Iran is the, is the leading events in the Middle East. I mean, just last week, President Biden finally took the fight to Yemen, and supposedly we attacked all these command and control and missile launcher sites in Yemen. And I thought, oh, this is great. Finally, they're doing something. Well, when the dust settled, it turned out they'd only taken about, they'd only degraded maybe 30% of the Houthis' ability to fire missiles at American vessels. So what does that do? I mean, that's not enough to stop the Houthis. It's not enough to deter them. It's just enough to, to let them come back and do it again. And so Iran, you know, the, the problem with the Biden administration is they came into office, and if Donald Trump was for it, they were against it. So they changed all. We gave them peace in the Middle East. They flipped it around. And so we now have this upside-down policy where President Biden thinks, well, if we placate, if we appease Iran, then they're going to be good, they're going to act like responsible members of the international community and they're not going to cause problems. No, Iran has had one goal since the Iranian Revolution in 1978-1979. They want to kill Israel, kill Jews, destroy the state of Israel, and get America out of the Middle East. They have not changed that goal in over 40 years. They're now using their proxies to do the, so they're having the fighting at sort of an arm's length. But something happened today which I think is really significant. The Iranian Revolutionary Guard launched an attack um, on American forces in northern Iraq or American facilities in northern Iraq. Now Iran proper is starting to get in the fight. Not just the not just Hamas in Gaza or Hezbollah in so, Lebanon K K or the various radicals in Iraq and Syria. Real K it's K now K Iran. KT, real quick then, if you were advising the president, would you say there should be direct attacks on Iran? Not right now, I would do three things. One, go take out all those sites in Yemen. Make it sure that they have no ability to retaliate. Number two, target their economy. You know, reinforce those sanctions. Mm -hmm. Drive the price of oil down. And number three, let, Ar let Israel finish the job. Let Iran mm -hmm. get the message that you mess with us and you're dead. Well said, KT McFarland. Thanks for being with us. So great. Appreciate it.